y'all welcome back to my channel Amy here so today we're gonna be talking about my September TBR um, it's a, I'm a little late to the party but here we are I have already started reading and have already actually finished a book uh, I finished stripped by KM Newhold that was the forebear construction series book number six um, so I've already finished it so that'll be on you'll hear more about that on my wrap-up I am also almost done listening to Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. Also, you'll hear more about that one in my wrap-up, uh, but it is about a woman that basically loses her memory every night. Her, her memory slate is just swiped clean, and she wakes up and she basically has to let herself know some kind of way what's happening you know how old she is who she's married to all the things that may have happened in her past that she needs to know now so she keeps like this little journal so yeah so that's all I'm gonna I'm gonna say because that's pretty much the extent of the story uh, but there are some suspicious characters well everybody at this point seems to be a suspect in a way it reminds me of 50 first dates if you want to look at it that way like but it's it's a thriller you know it's not it's not happy like the movie was but um that's that's the way it's it's working like her brain was like just cleaned at night and she woke up you know to like just remembering like the last day before her accident as far as like um 50 first dates goes in this book our character remembers uh like childhood and early 20 kind of memories she doesn't even remember her husband marrying her husband or a lot of things that has happened um after that time in her life so that to me is suspicious the husband's suspicious the doctor's suspicious the best friend's suspicious i don't know what's gonna happen but i'll let y'all know <laughs> As far as strip goes, this is, um, of course, one about uh, about one of our forebears men. He is a transgender man, uh, just looking for love, and uh, he comes across Dimitri. Um, our our forebears man is named um, Miller, and he runs across Dimitri. Dimitri is a professor who loves his TARDIS. He knits little cozy sweaters for his TARDIS. It is adorable. Um, I love, I loved this. Uh, it just made me happy. I read it during the time of like when we, during the week where we had no power. Uh, when I would read at night, I read on my Kindle. That was the only light I had. Um, but it was, it was fun and fluffy and exactly what I needed for that time. But we'll, we'll, we'll hear more about it later. Um, and then I also started a cozy mystery, File M for Murder by Miranda James. Uh, this is the third book in this cozy mystery series. It's the A Cat Stack Mysteries, I believe. This is about Charlie, who is a librarian, and his Maine Coon cat, Diesel. Uh, he take him and Diesel go everywhere and they solve murders. Um, so in this book, his daughter is coming home uh, to take up a job at the college that um, our that Charlie works out. Charlie is a librarian slash he does like um, back archives for this college. So anyway, his daughter's coming home from Hollywood. She's like this not super famous actress, but like kind of um, theatrical play actress. So she comes home and the boyfriend follows her home and there's you know there's some conflict there. Um, the boyfriend ends up dying or he ends up dead and of course Laura is a suspect. So Charlie and Diesel are going to try to clear Laura's name. Laura being Charlie's daughter. Uh, so yeah, I'm about halfway, a little over halfway done with that one. You'll hear more about it in my wrap up. Okay, so those are the three books that I am, I either read or I am currently reading slash listening to. Um, moving on, we have the Literally Dead book club, which the this month's book is All Is Well by Mona Awad. I don't know if I'm actually going to read this book. Um, it doesn't seem like, it doesn't spark my interest. I do love the cover though. A darkly funny novel about a theater professor suffering from suffering chronic pain who, in the process of staging a troubled pr production of Shakespeare's 
suddenly and miraculously, miraculously recovers. Why can I not speak the words? Um, so we have a professor um, who is a theater professor uh, doing a Shakespeare play. She has chronic pain. She was in an accident leaving her in excruciating chronic back pain. Uh, she had a failed marriage, deepening dependence on painkillers. And now she's on the verge of losing her job as a college theater director. I don't know, just as I was reading the synopsis, I was just like, mm, I don't know, it doesn't really interest me much. But let me know in the comments if you've read it, if you liked it, if you think I'll like it, and maybe I'll give it a go. But as for now, I don't know, maybe I'll get it from my library if they have it. We'll see. But let me know in the comments what you think about that book. And for the Book Troop Book Club pick of the month, it is 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. I'm actually looking very forward to this book because I'm morbid like that and I love reading uh, stories with pandemic or just other like just natural disasters. I, I am into. I, I like reading about it. I like watching a movie about it. I don't know why so morbid of me but yeah i'm i'm excited about this book but this does um have to do with today things that are going on in today the pandemic we have two people i believe that uh end up living together during the pandemic it says 56 days ago sierra and oliver meet in a supermarket and start dating the same week covid19 reaches irish shores 35 days ago, when lockdown threatens to keep them apart, Oliver suggests they move in together. Sierra sees a unique opportunity for a relationship to flourish without the scrutiny of family and friends. Oliver sees a change. Oliver sees a chance to hide who and what he really is. Today, detectives arrive at Oliver's apartment to discover a decomposing body inside. Can they determine what really happened? Or has lockdown created an opportunity for someone to commit the perfect crime? So, it wasn't a very long synopsis, that's why I went ahead and I read it, but um, doesn't really give much away, except that they're gonna be, and which we knew, they're gonna be living with each other and something was fishy about the guy. I knew, I knew all those things. Um, so yeah, I'm ready to get into this one. I also really want to dive into Scoring With Him by Lauren Blakely. I'm just so excited to have a male male romance that I've been looking forward to in my hands. I want to read it now. So this is book one of her Men of Summer series. There is a prequel though. I'll put a picture of it here. It is called Crushing on Him. So I do want to read this before I jump into that, of course. Um, I think it's going to be a short little read, but the synopsis says forbidden, off limits, dangerous. This desire for my teammate was all of those things. For the last few years, I crushed on him safely from a distance. Then on the first day of spring training, I come face to face with him for the first time. And when our eyes, eyes meet and linger, it's a whole new ball game, a much big, bigger risk too. One that can threaten my brand new career, but he's always been irresistible. And that's it. Uh, it says Crushing On Him is a prequel in the Men of Summer series and it leads into the full length, full length novel of Scoring With Him. Uh, it says you don't have to read Crushing On Him to enjoy Scoring With Him, but you'll likely enjoy the story before the story. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we have two baseball players. I'm really excited about that. This one says Falling For The Rookie wasn't part of the plan. As a pro athlete, I have one unbreakable rule when it comes to men. Don't date another baseball player. So. I'm ready to get into both of these. I definitely want to read the prequel just because, just because. <laughs> Next up on my list is The End Zone by Riley Hart. This is book two, uh, what's the series called? Atlanta Lightning. Uh, book one was The End Game. That was Wes and Anson's story. Anson was a, or is a professional football player. Wes was a uh, United States Senator. Uh, great book. You'll hear about it in my August wrap up whenever I get to that to film. But this book is about Jeremy who is actually Wes's best friend and Darren who is actually Anson's best friend. So we meet both these characters in the first book. 
So if you want to get a feel of these characters, I highly recommend the first book. You will not be disappointed. Jeremy has a little bit of a past. He he is married in the first book. We'll just say that. But they have like this open relationship kind of thing. So they, they have other partners besides themselves. Um, and Darren is considered to be straight in the first book. So we have a new gay kind of story or a bisexual kind of story. Don't really know the feel of what Darren is, but he was definitely with a lot of women in the first book. So I'm guessing bisexual. Bi curious. I don't know. We'll see, but I'm all about it. I I loved Darren in the first book as Wes's friend. He's just very fun and he was just trying to get Wes to have a good time the whole time. Um, and then Jeremy was kind of more in the background than Darren was as Wes's friend, um, but I really enjoyed his character as well. A little bit more um, outgoing and kind of fun is what the vibe I got from Jeremy, but this is going to be their story. So I'm definitely intrigued. You know I love me a good first time, first time with a guy, first time gay, I guess, even if it's bi, even if they're bisexual, being the first time with the opposite or with the same sex. I don't want to read the, the synopsis to you because it's going to give too much away about the first book. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. Oh, also currently reading, forgot to mention this one because I don't have it written down as currently reading because I just started it. It is Hunting the Merman. This is book two by Aramis Jordan. Uh, Aramis was kind enough once again to send me a art copy of this book. So I am currently reading, just started it. Uh, don't have too much to say right now, but it is Christian and Tarlis' story. We meet them, these characters, a little bit of them back in the first book, uh, but you can definitely read these books alone. This one is going to have some BDSM into it, but yeah, that's all I really know. I haven't really gotten very far, but I'm really excited because I love a good enemies to lovers kind of story, and I think that's what this is going to end up being. I do recommend the first book because I fell in love with, um, Arion, who is our merman, and Fernando, who is our human captive. Uh, these these mermen are are a little bit different. They cap they capture men to give them pleasure. They get pleasure from pleasuring their partner. So I find that very fascinating. The writing is fantastic. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet, or if you're into sort of a it's, it's set as a pa uh, paranormal, male male paranormal read, but yeah, it, it does have mermen in it and humans in sexual relations, so, but currently reading that one as well. And I definitely want to try to get to the seventh book of the Four Bears Construction, Drilled by K.M. Newhold. This is going to be the last book in the Four Bears Construction series. I'm so sad. I love these boys. They are so much fun. All of these books are just lighthearted and fluffy and fun and funny and there's there's no like extra drama in it. You know, um it's just it's just a good flow of these guys uh wanting to find love. They're like more middle-aged guys and it's it's just it's just fun. Like it's just, I love them so much. I can't speak highly enough of these books. Um, of course, you can probably read them on their own, but I highly recommend the entire series if you want to get a feel of all the characters, because all the characters are in the books. Um, and I, I just think that you would get a better feel uh, if you read more about them in their books. Uh, but yeah, this one is about more of the newcomers to the Four Barracks construction, Apollo and Ridge. Uh, Apollo has been with them for a little while. Ridge was actually just hired in the last book. Um, and they actually have a past together. What kind of a past? I don't know. I think it has to do with Apollo's sister. I'm going to find out all about it as soon as I get into it and I can't wait to get into it. They, for some reason, are going to be, um, together at like this remote location, like a cabin location, renovating this cabin. And I think the four bears, I think the guys probably had a lot to do with this. I think they sent them off by themselves because 
because there's tension between the two of them, but they work well together. I love her little blurbs that she puts at the end of um, her synopsis. It says, Drilled is a forced proximity. Best friends to enemies to lovers. Hilarious and steamy. Final book in the Forebears Construction series. I'm so sad. And then I just picked three more books. Uh, these are thrillers that i really been wanting to get into. Uh, this is... Confessions on the 745 by Lisa Unger. Uh, Lisa Unger, I've only read one short story by her, but I was so impressed, so, so impressed that I want to start reading more. I have an audiobook called In Your Blood or something waiting for me to listen to on my Audible app. But then she came out with this book. First of all, I love the cover. Um, this is about, it says, be careful to whom you tell your darkest secrets. Commuting home from her job in the city. She strikes up a conversation with a beautiful stranger in the next seat. The woman confess confesses that she's been stuck in an affair with her boss. And then Selena confesses that she suspects her husband to be sleeping with the nanny. Um, and then Days later, Selena's nanny disappears. So we have two women that have confessed the secret to each, to each other on a train. They don't know each other, but I have a feeling their stories are connected some kind of way. But yeah, so we'll see. Get into that one. I actually have all these on audio ready to listen to. Uh, the next one is I Know You Know by Jilly McMillan. This one has been on my TBR shelf for a really long time. But I recently was listening to Bent Biblio's podcast and Jilly McMillan was on it speaking about her book The Nanny. Which has kind of been on my TBR wish list. I don't actually have it on my actual TBR. But it's always kind of been there. Been kind of curious about it. Um, so as I was listening to her speak on the podcast, one, one, I fell in love with her, the author, and two, I was like, I have a book on my bookshelf by this, by this author that I need to read before I dive into the nanny, which I may or may not have already purchased, and it's on its way. But this one says, um, the, this original chilling and twisty mystery about two shocking murder cases 20 years apart and the threads that bind them. I think this may be a little bit podcasty too. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just hoping that's what it's gonna be. Yes. So we have uh, Cody Swift. He's a filmmaker. Um, two of his best friends were murdered 20 years ago. So he starts a podcast to record his findings. It says, for as long as he can remember, film ma filmmaker Cody Swift has been haunted by the deaths of his childhood best friends. The loose ends of the police investigation consume him so much that he decides to return to Bristol in search of answers, hoping to uncover new evidence and to encourage those who may be keeping long buried secrets to speak up. Cody starts a podcast to record his findings, but there are many people who don't want the case along with cold along with old wounds, reopened so many years after the tragedy, especially Charlie's mother, Jess, who decides to take matters into her own hands. I'm not going to read any more. That's like the middle little part of the synopsis, but I, I thought I read podcasts somewhere in that book. So, um, so yeah, uh, just by listening to her on the podcast, I was like, I, I know I have a book sitting on my shelf by her. I need to read it. So we're going to do it. And lastly, His and Hers by Alice Feeney. I uh, recently just got uh, Alice Feeney's new book, Rock, Paper, Scissors from Book of the Month. So before I jump into that, I want to read this one. I have not read it yet, but so far I have not been let down by Alice Feeney. This one says, there are two sides to every story, yours and mine, ours and theirs, his and hers, which means someone is always lying. I'm pretty sure we get the perspective from both uh, the woman and the man. I believe they're, are they husband and wife? So Anna is a news anchor and she is covering a story, but the story, it says she's at the heart of it. Then we follow a detective chief inspector, Jack Harper, who is suspicious of Anna's involvement in the case. 
and then he soon Jack soon finds out that he is also a suspect in his own murder investigation. Someone knows more than they are letting on. Someone isn't telling the truth. Telling the truth. So yeah, we get the perspective between Anna and the detective Jack, um, and I guess their story of what's happening in the murder case. So excited. All right, y'all, so that is it. That's what I'm going to be reading for the month of September, along with the uh, male male romances that I talked about in the beginning of this video. Once again, let me know, let me know what y'all think about All's Well. Y'all think I should read it or, you know, throw it in there? What do y'all think? Super excited. Can't wait to see what September holds for us, how many books we'll get through in September. Uh, y'all, the year is just flying by. Before we know it, it's going to be Christmas. I mean, I'm so looking forward to fall. Uh, we're, we're right around the corner, although it is still scorchingly hot over here. Although our nights have been getting a little bit cooler. Um, but I'm super excited about the coming of fall. But it just seems like it's going so fast. It needs, it needs to slow down, at least for fall. Just a little bit. But thank y'all always so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments what you'll be reading for the month of September. Um, as always, I hope you're all doing well out there. Hugs from me all around. And I will see y'all very, very soon in a new video. Bye, y'all.